Well, hello. This is Brian from Logic Pro Hacks or FadedShadows.com. Hey, how's it going? Well, today, tonight, in the morning, or wherever you're at, this is a really cool day. Yes, that's right. All right, so we have here a template that I created, and it's based off of Mozart's piano quartet in G minor. Quartet is usually a, a violin, a viola, a cello, and a piano. Out of that quartet, I took a standard MIDI file that had a piano in it, and I broke it up, and I created a bass line, a pads from it, synth lines, all these different instrument lines that you would normally see in a, like a, a full set for like an EDM crossover kind of thing. And that's what I did here. And so I thought I would uh, show you guys how this was made. So the first thing I would like to do is I would like to show you guys the the just the very basic part and we'll build off from there. The first part is the sub. So we'll go ahead and we'll just show you the sub. And let's go ahead and make sure that these two are kicked in here. And I'll go ahead and just play it for you. Yeah, that's the heavy sub there. Hence the name, heavy sub. <laughs> All right, and here's the off base. Now, what I did with the um, off base, you can see that you know it's hitting on every every off beat. Hence the name, off base. And what I did not want happening is I didn't want the and the off base is is an octave higher than the sub, but it was clashing. So the trick of the trade here is what you do is you create a kind of like an off ghost side chain off kick ghost kick kind of deal which is created in the Kleifegeist and and I created the same pattern that's the off base but what I did is then I had the um, compressor ducking the uh, off base you can see there's my compressor and it's set for bus 33 which is this is the incent to bus 33 so that way when i didn't want the um, off base and the sub clashing so that that helps and so let's go ahead and play it and see what you guys think so got these two enabled So yeah, it's, you know, and I don't have the side chain set that much. I just have a little bit of side chain. It's not like, like one of these hard slamming type side chains. It's just enough to where it leaves enough room for the off base to come through on the sub. And it, and it sounds really cool in the mix when you do it that way. I have another ghost kick side chain deal, which is for my drums. And that also helps that. And so you kind of get that doom, 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 you know, kind of sound. Willy Wonka in the trailer. <laughs> no, it's not that doom da doom da. No, no it's not like that. <laughs> now, so those are the subs. Now let's go ahead and let's do the uh, pads. And I created uh, three pads. Well, the first one is a, an an air flute. I'll go ahead and just play that for you. All right, so how this was made, I have this um, long, this long ass reverb that's going on for the um, for the air flute, and it's going to bus one. And basically, what it is, it's a tape delay, a platinum verb, and uh, a compressor. On the compressor, I have it sidechain to bus thirty three, which is the 
off kick or the off ghost off channel. And then on the pads, I have another compressor and it's going to bus 32, which is going to the main kick. So you kind of get this in and out effect that's going on, and which sounds really cool because you got the main air flute, which has the main side chain on the four on the floor type of kick, but it's reverb is actually going to a different type of side chain. <laughs> it just kind of fools with your brain a little bit and it just really sounds cool when you, you know, when it gets into it. So I really like that. So and that's in this template. I really did some really a lot of work in the processing. Let's go ahead and play the, the female vox, female vox. So go ahead and just play that. The Vox, Vox Choir, or whatever you want to do it. Created from one of my synths. I have, you know, the big reverb on channel one. You know, it's bust 33 off ghost. This thing right here is called a track stack. So it's in that, and it has its own different compressor. Two different side chains going on. Zen pad. Zen pad is cool. I like it. I really, this is probably one of the, one of the best pads I ever found and then tweaked and made or whatever you want to call it. I'm using a setting from RetroSynth and I found it in here. It's in synth pads and it's the very last one, Zen Space. Now, the cool thing about this one is you notice that the detuned seven semitones. Now, what happens there is I believe that makes a perfect fifth. Yeah, so that makes a perfect fifth from the actual root key. And what I did is I tweaked the amp envelope and the filter envelope, and then I also added more chorus. That's what I did to this setting. I think that's about it, what I did, and maybe tweak some of the, um, you know, the mix in here and, and the shape a little bit. Well, that's about it for that one. So I'll go ahead and just play that one by itself. So, as you can hear, there's a, a lot of movement going on, and that, that was the other thing that I forgot I did, is I think the original setting had is set right here, and I changed it over here, and then also increased the um, LFO speed, so that way, you know, you can get this movement just for one bar. So that is the Zen pad. And then when you put them all together, it sounds like this. Now, the neat thing is, since I have the perfect fifth on the uh, Zen pad, we could probably move the Zen pad up right here, since it's kind of like a mid midline pad sound. It goes right in sync with the root, and so you kind of give this chord sound, and then and then I have the um, a higher lead sound up here for the pads. So that sounds really good. I, I really like the um, just the sound it gave. And it's not too overpowering where that's all you hear in the mix. So I got the volumes down, you know, relatively. So those are the pads. Now, piano. Let me explain this. This is just your regular piano sound. Now, as far as the piano, there's not going to be a piano, any sampled pianos included. What I'm using here is I'm actually using the regular default piano that you get in Logic, and it's called the Yamaha Grand Piano. Now, I will leave the settings. I did tweak the settings. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll increase the drive, maybe turn on the fat, you know, give it some more oomph, you know, it just depends. You know, maybe tweak. Add a little bit more tail with the uh, release. Well, that's about it. And then I'll put on a compressor. And I have some compressor settings in there. And then uh, EQ. And I'll EQ it. And that's it.
That's all I did to it. Now, as far as that, you could change any piano you want. Uh, there's tons of free pianos out there that sound really decent, but I find that the out of all the Logic pianos, uh, Logic sampled pianos, that's part of Logic Pro, the Yamaha is the best sounding. They have a Bosendorfer. It just sounds like crap. And I think they have another one, if I said that right, uh, another piano in there. It's a Steinway, and it just doesn't sound that good. The Yamaha is the best one. That's just my own personal preference. So I always use it. Now, I was using Contact a while ago, if you could ever find one. Contact had a sampled piano. It's like a German piano, August Forster. And that piano is an amazing sample. If you ever can get your hands on it, it's, it's just a great piano. I believe they released it in version, contact version 3, 2, it might have been 2. Like the latest version, like it's now at 10. You can't find it. I don't think it's in there. I, not even, or 9 or 8. I don't even think it's in those either. If you can find like an old version, grab that sampled piano. It's a August Forrester, best piano sampled ever. It's, it's just my preference, but uh, we're getting off track there. Guitars. Let's go ahead and tell you about the guitars here. All right, first guitar, let's go ahead and you can see that I have it panned hard right. And then I have some pre-faders and, and regular faders. The bus seven is, is going to this and I have a EQ on it and a limiter. So it gives your, your amplified sound. Bus 10 is another amp. But it's up on Pawn Shop Distort. And so I got two amplifiers on two different buses. And they're both at 100, well, zero setting. You could tweak that wherever you want. And then bus two is a, a reverb. Bus three is a delay. It's made with the ES1. Now, you would ever think you could use the ES1 to make a really nice guitar sound, but you can't. And let me show you something. Let's go ahead and let's just disable everything. Doom, doom, doom. And go ahead and just and just let you play it raw by itself. Check this out. And just hit play. So let me go ahead and just change that real quick so you can hear it in full stereo. Now, just the sound by itself is, you know, it's like a plucky type sound. You know, and the ES1 is really great for stuff like this. And a lot of people overlook the ES1. I actually find that I like to use the ES1 better than the ES2. It just, it seems like it's just a, a more simpler interface. It's a little bit easier to get around. I just like it, you know, but the S2 is a lot more advanced. You can do more automation and all that, blah, 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 blah. But my point is I created a guitar out of this and it's really cool. So I just use the default sound that comes on it. And then I just tweak the cutoff, add a little bit more drive, ADSR. I think that's it, really. That's all I really did. If we go ahead and just shut that out. Now, if we put all the effects on, the compressor and the EQ, let's see what it sounds like now. Yeah, it's a lot louder. Put this back to the hard right. Because I'll explain why I'm doing that. And put these guys back on. Those are distortion amps. And my reverb and delay. Now listen to it. So as you can hear, it doesn't really sound like it's panned anymore. Well, that's right, because what I'm what I'm doing is is I'm sending the signal over to the far right, but then the signal is coming back and feeding through a stereo sound. So it's kind of like it's a little bit stronger on the right side, but yeah, I, I like it. So what happens then is, is I have this doing the same thing over here on the Telecaster, which is made from Sculpture. And it really gives this really wide sound. So listen to this. Yay! 
yeah. Nice. And for the sculpture is just a really, it's just the Telecaster setting that you find in sculpture. You know, plucked instruments, Telecaster. I may have tweaked something. The EQ, probably, yeah, I tweaked that and then um, leave that on there. But I don't know if you know this, but the sculpture has the this EQ in here, which is called a modeling EQ. It's a little bit different from a normal channel EQ. And what it does is it mimics the actual EQ of an instrument, and they put it in there. So I actually leave that EQ in there because it's almost like it's part of the instrument. So, and sometimes I may change it. And I honestly, can't, I can't remember if I did that or not on this one. But it sounds good right now, so I'm just going to leave it. And it's a template. And so you guys have the ability to change it if you want Put different sounds, use different instruments, use third-party plugins, whatever you want to do. So that's the guitars. So the synths. I'm using ES2 for the first one. And it's just basically um, a setting I found and then just tweaked. It's called Nice Sinker. And I'll go ahead and just play that. the synth I don't think I have any panning on that one and then I have the uh, poly synth for the other lead and that's using the retro and it's a big poly sinker something like that and I really like the hard sync sound that you can get out of the retro it just sounds really nice and when you put that together you know and I have a little reverb and delay on this one compression it sounds like this. Cool. So those are the uh, the scents. Now let's go ahead to the pluck. The pluck is made from the ES2. And it's basically, you know, you, you take your right click on here and you just basically just going through here and just kind of figure out, all right, what's what's a good sound for a pluck? And so I got the vox, the sax, and it's a little bit of noise and I go like that. And then I, you know, just change my, my resonance and the drive and, you know, just add a few things. You know, I had a, um, a pluck template that I created a while ago and I just kind of just copied from that and then I just tweak it until I... I, I like what I heard and that's what I got here and it's kind of like a stabby type sound because it has a little bit more has some tail into it you can see right here the release is um, up and if we go ahead and just play that this is what it sounds like <laughs> remember did I put an LFO on it or not yeah yep I have an LFO so let's go ahead let's just disable that just real quick disable all these and that's what it sounds like now it's this one right here that's what it was So we could probably, you know, maybe if you don't want so much, you could probably just take it down like that. That sounds kind of cool. We could probably automate that too. So let's go ahead and just do that real quick. Let's go ahead and... So you know, as I'm doing this video, I, I realize, oh, I can make that change and it'll even sound better. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And let's go ahead and now the best way to automate stuff I found is go over here and change the read to something like touch. And then let it play. Let's go ahead and just play it. And then just go ahead and just move the um, cutoff value that you wanted move. Just move it a little bit until you see it come up. 
And then before you do anything, change it back to read, because if you go in and make another change again, it's going to mess you up. So I want change it back to read. Now highlight it. Just hit your delete key and delete those values because we want to create our own. And now we have the value that I wanted to control, which is the cutoff one and two, and on the uh, LFO setting, which is this value right here. This is what I'm going to be automating right here, is this one right here. Put that on the side, and then what we can do here is we can do something like this. Change it like that. Now watch it. It play. You know, watch this guy right here. And listen to it as it plays. Oh, that's so nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to raise up the... Um, this level just a little bit felt like it was just oh it was going in the negative that's why let's keep it at zero that's why i was doing that i keep on forgetting the es2 has a negative uh value for their um lfo setting here um so, so let's go ahead and just do this This sounds so nice. I love it. Let's just raise it up just a little bit more. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> and fellows, this is why I love to do tutorials because I feel like I have a connection. You guys are a friend and I'm talking to a long lost friend. And so when I'm talking to you and I'm explaining to you what I'm doing and I'm like, oh yeah, that idea, why don't I just do that? And that's what I just did. So, and that's why I like doing tutorials because it's like, it, it opens your, your mind to deeper things like, oh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I know that's deep. It's really deep, but eh, that's just the way I roll. All right. So we got that going and what we could do then is we could do something like this. We can um, copy that value, put it like that, and then put one more right there. And what, what did we say we were at? We're at 34, so let's start it. Yeah, something around 30. Yeah, something like that. And I think you could copy this if you do something like this. See how I'm just taking my um, then a highlight over it like that, and then hit Command C go right there, and then just Command V. Yeah, that works. And then go right there, Command V. Yeah, that works. And I'll just leave that right there. That work, and then Command V. If we can drag this one out just a little bit, oops. Oh, just a little bit more. Command V again. I just love the copy function, the automation, because I really hate doing automation sometimes. It's just, it's so monotonous. But when you take the monotonous out of it, you can really enjoy it which I'm doing right now. <laughs> I know, this <is> lame -o. <laughs> All right, here we go. Another one. Yeah, that's right. Now, I'm not even sure what's the, how this is going to sound in the mix, but, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and just leave it. And then put that, something like that. Now we can create more movement with the plucks. And, oh, that sounds so nice. It's 
So that is the mega pluck coming with you, coming at you in this uh, template. All right. So I'll go ahead and I'll I'll tweak those those settings there for you. And um, oh yeah. So we got the pluck. Oh, next thing, drums. Let's go ahead and let's play some drums for you. Let's get our automation here. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I just have a regular prog progressive type kick made in ultra beat and it's using actually two drums layered you have this one and then you have this one there's um it's not a sharp attack because i got the sharp attack on here and so they kind of meld in there really good so that's what i did i did the eq in ultra beat for the uh, higher kick and when you play it, it sounds like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, you know. It's a, a nice in-your-face hard kick. So that's that's in this mix, in this template. Now the drums. Let's, this is probably, I've worked on these drums for a while. Um, they actually originally came from Native Instruments had some, uh, a, a set, a, a metal set, a metal rock, heavy rock metal set. And I eventually tweaked the MIDI settings on the rock set. And then, you know, eventually got something that matched to where, you know, each segment here had a different drum rhythm, drum pattern that was going on. And go ahead and hit the X key so we can go ahead and enable all the drums. Because, yeah, this was I got. On. So what I'm using for drums is I'm using the drum designer. Did you know this? I don't know if you knew this or not. But when you create a drum designer, if you go in here and you hit drummer and you hit create, it's a cancel. So that messed me up. I'll go ahead and just create one anyways just to show you. Come on, create, create. It's taking a while. There it goes. All right, so it comes up with you know, drummer Kyle, and you can change all the different ones. You can use Logan and all these guys, and it gives you like a profile of what each one is about. So what I did is I created one, and I, I believe I used Logan, Mr. Logan. And then um, I decided, you know what? I didn't want to use the, it'll come with this, it'll look like this. And I'm like, how in the heck can I edit this? There's no real way. Yeah, you can go in here and you can edit it like this and change all these settings. And you can also even do the um, drum kit to multi out. But I still didn't have the control that I wanted to where I wanted to have instruments here. And I wanted to be able to do a hi-hat there and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can make some really cool sounds, but I didn't want to do that. I really wanted just to do my own thing. So did you know that you could take a regular MIDI clip, you can actually drag the MIDI clip over here, see, and it will work in, instead of using this, which I found very helpful because I really don't like this. It just, it gets on my nerves. I can't really see, I can't really edit that. To some other people, they may like it, I just don't. But as my point is, is the drum designer is not really an audio per se. It's MIDI. The whole thing is based on MIDI. And they're just doing something different. And um, sometimes different is good. Sometimes difference is not so good. So for me, I, I found a way around it where I can use MIDI with it. Because I really love the sets that come with it. The sets are very nice. So I'm using a Birchwood set or something like that uh, for this one. Go ahead and delete that one as for example. And let's go ahead and just... Turn these guys all on here. So I'm on. And you can see I have it all multied out. I have two channels going to bus nine, which is uh, my snare channel for further processing. Where's bus nine? Where were we? Yeah, all right. So here's bus nine, snare group. And you can see on my snare group, I have compressor, tape delay. Now it's not a tape delay, it's actually tape distortion or tape saturation, as you want to call it, because what I do is, is I play with the delay setting. I 
take it all off and then I go in and I up the feedback and I go in here there's this advanced part and then I, I tweak the distortion level it's like your bias level and it sounds really good on drums so that's what I'm doing there for the tape delay uh, channel EQ limiter and then bus 5 is drum verb drum verb is actually a shorter reverb for like a short run reverb, reverb and short reverbs work very well with drums so that's what I'm doing there so that's the snare group then you have the toms the toms are on bus 12 Let's see where is bus 12 du -du 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 -du. over here okay same deal tape distortion or saturation a little bit different compressor limiter same deal again and 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 i have compressor settings for toms let's see if you hear you see you know i use an opto for the toms and then so just meld them all together and it sounds really good so that's that let's go ahead and just play something for you all right let's start right here Now, as you notice that there's no ump in the uh, kick because I took that out because I'm actually using this kick with it. So if we go ahead and put that in here, I'll let you hear it again. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about now. So that is some really fun stuff. I, I just, I love the, the, just the rock kit, you know, just after tweaking everything, I was just, I was able to get something really cool with the, the drums and all those settings are there. Now, granted, you will have to have a drum designer and get all this cool stuff to work with and play with, especially if you're into classical crossover and hard rock music. So EDM that kind of stuff. Heck, you can even raise the BPM up. I mean, you can make this in a, a dubstep if you wanted to. Uh, change it to 140. So, further ado, let's check it out. All right, have fun. 